I, I just want to know, yeah? How do you feel knowing that you are running one of the biggest and the best fast food restaurant in Cote d'Ivoire? The biggest, really. I, I, I passed here with some ladies and everybody was like, you need to interview her before you go back to Ghana. And I'm like, who is she? And they showed me a billboard of you in town. It's like, that's her. It seems you're so big in Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, thank you. You don't know about that? <laughs> or you're trying to be modest? No, 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 I'm not trying. Uh, you trying to... you know, when I think about all I want to accomplish mm. and I'm not done yet, I cannot say to myself that I'm big enough or oh, I've made a lot of big things. From now, I cannot say that. I think that answer deserves a round of applause, man. <laughs> you know what, I saw you on a billboard. Is it also about your restaurant? It's not about my restaurant. Actually, sometimes some company takes me to make them advertisements. Yeah, brand influence or two? Maybe, some of them. <laughs> which one do you love the most? Brand influencer, being uh, owner of a restaurant, which is which? No, owner of the restaurant, actually. And, uh, this influence thing uh, and, and, and all that, no, not that much. Not that much. Can you tell me something about you that you think I don't know? Uh, I'm a Nigerian, Nigerian woman. Mm. I'm from Ivory Coast. I was born here. I studied here. And I, I did primary school here, high school and college, and two years of university before going to the US. Actually, oh. To Alala in Georgia. Okay. So I was there, I did my master there, MBA. Wow. For how yes. long? I was in the US for three years. And you came back to Cote d'Ivoire? After the US, I went to London. I got married. I went to London to live with my husband. And after London, I went to Dubai. I was in Dubai for, I think, three or four years in Dubai. And then I decided to come back in my country. No, let's, let's just go into details. Okay. You, you, <laughs> you were in London. You married in London? You got married in London? I got married in Ivory Coast. You came back? I, I met my husband while I was in the US. He was in London. We met actually through internet, through Facebook. Hey! And then... <laughs> okay, the magic of Facebook, eh? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So you guys decided to get married in Ivory Coast. Yes. So you came back and then went we to London. We came back to Ivory Coast to get married and then we, we went back to London. How long did you guys stay in London? Uh, I stayed actually in London one year, only one year, because, you know, I didn't like London. Why? Well, London is quite too much gray for me. You know, I like the sun, I like the hot, I like to move, and London was too rainy. The weather was always gray and everything. Hey. And actually, when I was in London, I got pregnant. So it wasn't the good time for me to enjoy <laughs> London. <laughs> so at what point did you leave London to Dubai? I leave London to Dubai because uh, my husband got moved to Dubai by his company. Mm. So we had to go to Dubai to live, mm. to live mm. there. Mm. So it was when I got to Dubai that I started business because I was at home. And uh, I was like, I have to do something. I, want to, mm. like, I have to do something to help my husband. I have mm. to do something to matter. So uh, I look around me and I realized that in Dubai, I, got, uh, I had many opportunities to do business. Mm. So I tried to do business from Dubai, Dubai in my country, Ivory Coast. Wow. So what, what were you doing in Dubai? What kind of business were you doing in Dubai and then bringing it back to Ivory Coast? I was selling clothes actually, yes, because I discovered that there, and uh, it wasn't something familiar in Ivory Coast. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is something ladies in my countries mm. can like. So I just bought some some pieces, I think maybe five pieces or something like that. I went back home, I took pictures of myself, I put those pictures on internet, and then boom, that's it, boom. And I was like, okay, maybe that's a big business. That's yeah. the power of the internet. That's the power of the It business. seems internet is your favorite thing because you met your husband on the internet. You, you started your first business on the internet. I think you, you're so grateful to the internet then. 
You don't, you don't think the youth of Africa needs to take advantage of the internet? Internet actually is a huge gift for young people. Instead of being there, acting sometimes. <laughs> acting like they've made it in life. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> They have to uh, see all the opportunities they have. You know, from internet, you can, you can even travel without living where you are. I used to sell clothes in Ghana. Wow. I sold a lot of clothing in Ghana. I had an online boutique in Ghana from Dubai. You understand? Through internet. Through so internet. So you see how many things you can do. So you're making money in Ghana, even though you're living in yes in, in Dubai. Dubai. I was making money in Ghana, in Ivory Coast, in Nigeria. Even I was I was living in Dubai. Will you say that business was profitable? Really, really profitable because at that time I didn't have any employee. I was only shipping things to my clients. Wow. I didn't even have a shop. I only had a small office to stock my goods. And then I was selling like that. What point did you move back to Cote d'Ivoire? I moved back to Cote d'Ivoire uh, when my husband and I decided to come back and establish here because we realized opportunities were in Africa, actually. We realized that making it in life and have it recognized was possible only in Africa, in our countries. Say that again. <laughs> Say that again. I want to hear that again. <laughs> Make it in life uh -huh. and have it recognized. Wow. Was only possible in Africa. In Africa. Because you're an African yourself. Yes. You lived in USA, London, Dubai, and you think you can only be recognized when you live, you know. When you, when you work and make it in Africa. Does it mean all the life that you spend in those countries, you are not recognized for what you're doing. I'll give you one example. You okay. see, if today you came in Ivory Coast mm. and people talk to you about me, mm. I don't think if we were in the U.S. with the size of my business actually, that would be accountable. I don't think so. You got my point. No, I got your point, and okay. that's an incredible point. Um, when you came back here, what was the business that you started with your husband in here? Here, when I got back here, I started selling clothes. Mm. I, I opened big shops. I even opened one shop in a mall, a big shop, 200 square meters in one mall. Mm. I had over big shops selling clothes. When my husband, my husband here opened a, 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 a journal, I think journal in, in English is, mm, my English. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. She said like uh, Times Magazine. Oh yeah, yeah. journal, uh, journal, journal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Newspaper. yeah newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Actually, okay. okay. Newspaper. God, I need to learn French, man. <laughs> okay. So my, my husband is a financist. Mm. So when he came back, he opened a company mm. in uh, finance mm. and uh, a, a newspaper. Yeah. To. Mm to promote finance and to give information about financial markets mm. here in, in, in Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast, yes. Did you guys, are you guys still, are you still um, running your shop with the clothes? Not now. I stopped a little bit because you, now I'm focused on my fufu and stuff. Ah, <laughs> now it's about the next question. Yes. So what made you invest in restaurant business in Africa? Okay. So, uh, when I came back, mm. as I, I was saying, I was in clothing, mm. and then COVID-19 came. So, things got difficult, actually. Traveling to China was impossible, it's yeah. still impossible, impossible. today. Yeah. Uh, bringing goods from China got expensive, mm. and then it was difficult continue with the business actually. So I was like, okay, so now what am I doing? I have to, to, to find something. And I remember that years ago, mm. we had that idea of 
making the fast food with local food. My husband had and I. Fast food with local food? Yes. Like only Ivorian food? Ivorian food, but actually African food. Wow. Ghanaian food, Nigerian food, mm. Cameroonian food. Please don't make Nigerian jollof here. <laughs> only give us Ghanaian jollof. That's we, okay. We do, we do a goosey. A goosey. But you know, actually, mm -hmm. Ivorian jollof got a price ah. in front of Ghanaian jollof and Nigerian jollof. <laughs> I was surprised myself. You know, in front, they had that. <laughs> I was not expecting they had that. that competition. <laughs> Uh -huh. They had uh, Ghanaian jollof, Nigerian jollof, Senegalese jollof, uh -huh. and Ivorian jollof. And who and won? I, I, Ivorian jollof. Ivorian jollof. Can you believe that? Please. Hey, hi. <laughs> Do you guys have Ivorian jollof? <laughs> so, Ghanaian people and Nigerian Niger people, you have to know that now, in this jollof thing, Ivorian are also there. <laughs> I never knew we got Ivorian jollof. I'm so <laughs> sorry about that. But now you've invested in local food, fast food, which means you've got delivery and all of that. Yes. Wow, how is the business like so far? This business is really, really big because today delivery is 40% of our uh, shift affair of wow. the company. Yes, today. You, you, you run the delivery by yourself? We have, uh, we have, the delivery people, we have our motorcycles, mm. and then we also on platforms that, uh, like like Uber Foods, mm. we have those platforms here, so we are also on those platforms, and wow. people order from We also have platform. Jumia Food then. Jumia Food, Glovo. So, how long have you been running the restaurant? Uh, I think in two months, it will be two years. And how many restaurants do you have in Abidjan? We have four, soon we have five, five, and then soon with Jean he we'll have maybe seven. Wow, you, you partner with John yes. or something? Tell me something more about you and John collaboration. How did it happen? John is someone that one day like you came here for a video. Mm. He loved the idea, he loved the business, mm. and you know he's a Pan-Africanist. Mm. Yeah. He's for promoting everything that is made by Africans in Africa. So he helped us a lot by promoting our business. People today come from all over the world, from the US, from London, and when they come, they say, oh, I saw your business in Jen video on YouTube. Wow. <laughs> so I came also to taste, and I was like, Wow, this YouTube thing, maybe I, I'll start <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> so that's, that's how he starts. And one day he said, okay, you know, I want to be part of this history. Wow. And when we saw everything that he was doing mm. for African people, mm. the way he wanted to empower African people, we said, okay, we want someone like him with this vision that is working in also our vision mm. to be a part of the history mm. and to build this history together. I also want to be part of the history, so but I want to take that. No, I, I, I want to take the restaurant to Ghana. To Ghana. Yeah. Uh, fast food. Can. Because I don't, I, I don't know, do we have fast food in Ghana, by the way? Sorry. I think Look, not, 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 not that much. You know, I've been in Ghana many times. Uh, comparing to Nigeria, Mm. Nigeria are very good with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah like you're in right. Ghana, you're right. when you want to eat something mm. fast and everything, mm. like local food, mm. you don't have these fast foods around yeah. that you, where, where you can we're, go. We're making history. Uh, please give me the proposal. <laughs> uh, and by the way, we need to beat John's record. Because if how many people have been coming here because of John? I can't count. You, you can't count, eh? 50% of the Fi revenue. 50% of the revenue. So, which is, we are going to make it 100% of the revenue. Yeah. <laughs> are Ivorians embracing the business, the, the food and everything? Are they patronizing it? Really, I was surprised because they really, 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 really loved the idea. It was like a national thing that came from all over Abidjan, from all over Ivory Coast. To, to, to discover. And today we, we have a lot of every, every day that come and they start in loving what is mm. made in Africa. Because you know, we Francophone people, mm. we like uh, pain au chocolat, you know, croissants, 
French foods, those things. <laughs> and we are proud to be in a, in a croissanterie or in a, uh, have hot chocolate and take pictures and everything. And we are sometimes ashamed of eating fufu. Wow. And then, yes, because that's, that's what uh, I think was happening here, really. And today, we are trying to promote that, to promote that our local foods is what we should be proud of. You see, does it mean that they, they, they are not proud to be Africans? I can't say so that they're not proud. Uh, I can say that, you know, the col 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 colonization. Yes, has very impacts. Wow. Frank Francophone people, really. And now we are starting to wake up. Mm, 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 and mm. We, are, we are seeing change. We are starting to wake up and reappropriate things that are our own. What has been the major challenge that you face in this whole two years journey in Africa? The major challenge I can say has been to find people that, uh, that, that have this vision that I have for the business here. People with uh, good qualification, people that are ready to work. Wow. People that are not, are not focused on money, but are focused on making things change. That's the real difficulty that I had. Just want to say, like you're an inspiration. You've yes. done an incredible job. How many people have you employed so far here? Yeah. Today we are we are one around one, one, 150 people in the company. Wow. Yes. In two years. In two years. How, how does that make you feel? You know, this thing is not only about money. Today is really about the people that are employees in this company, the people that got job because you know how in Africa it's really hard for our people mm. and you want it to come here and to do something that will impact our society really and to have a business that you can share with our people see that comes to my next question we have a lot of Africans living in the diaspora especially with a francophone audience because this video is for francophone audience when the francophones travel they don't like coming back to invest in here. That's true. When I go to so many Francophone countries, I see the business is owned by the French people, business owned by the Lebanese, business owned by the Chinese people. You don't think it's about time for Africans that were born here, that left, or even those that were born in the diaspora to come back with their money to invest in their own countries? You don't think so? I think it's time because, you know, uh, uh, we are counting on politics, we are counting on government, but it's our forces that can make the difference. We have to come back to make changes. We have to come back to impact. We have to come back to build our continent. It's important. I don't know why you're making me clap a lot today. <laughs> and I wanted to add something. You know, if today you see Lebanese coming somewhere, living there, making money. You have to think about that twice. Why do they come in our countries to establish? Because opportunities are there. Do you think there are opportunities for Africans in Africa? Yes, a lot. A lot of opportunities. Uh, I like to say that the, the ground is still empty. So it's the time now to come and establish. When she says the ground is still empty, I will say this, the book is still empty. You see, she said something earlier that when she came, now she's recognized. We need your name in the book. So it's about time you come, because living in France, especially they love living in Paris, by the way. Um, living in Paris, the book is written. There's nothing that you're gonna write to add it to the book. There's no page. There's no. Thank you, my sister. There's no page. There's, there's no page. Here, the page is empty. Come and put your name. It's all about legacy, right? Yes. 
what legacy are you going to leave behind? You can be the best engineer in Paris, you can be the best engineer everywhere, but you won't be recognized. You know why? Because I don't think you, you mean so much to them. But when you come here, you, you come and impact in the lives of your people here. Wow. You know, you're taking people out of poverty and you become their hero. Let's join our hands and build Africa together. Like, you, you, I wanted to cry with the words that you're saying because this is my job. And when I meet people who say exactly the same thing, I feel so happy that I'm not alone. Wow. I don't know what to say next. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what would it be? If I had the chance to change one thing, I think, I think it would be, you know, like in Dubai, one thing that surprised me in Dubai, mm. to open a business as a foreigner, you have to have, you, you have to have one person from Dubai to be an investor or part to have shares in the company. Sponsor. Sponsor. It's like that in China too. And this thing is the, I think is the, the, the thing that empower Dubai people. But here, people, people, they come, they can open everything. The population is still poor. They, 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 they have they have, uh, they, they, they give them many, many, uh, how to say that, advantages. advantages on taxes and everything to help them establish. And for the people in the country, it's hard. So it ha if I can change something, it will be that. One business, one Ivorian. Do you regret coming back to I will never regret coming back. <laughs> you know, actually, if you give me one million dollars, you say, go, go live in London, or go live in the US, I'll say, mm -mm. no. Does, does it mean that the restaurant is more profitable than the clothing business? Now? You know, it's not about, even it's not about profitab profitability. It's about the war of Africa, you wow. see? Living in my country, wanting to, 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 to eat my fufu at any time of the day, and being able to find it everywhere, having my family. You see, this, this warm mm. of Africa is different mm. from the coldness in there. in there. Here, you have a problem. You can knock at the, at the door, talk to your brother, and find solution. So after that, actually, today, the restaurant business is more profitable than the clothing business. Yeah. Yes, because everything you have here, we have here is local. Mm everything. We take local meat, we take local vegetables, everything is local. Uh, you, you assess even the vegetables and everything from the local people? Yes, from the local people. From the women in the farms, from the cooperative and everything. That's incredible. So that's, this is empowering all the chain, you see. <laughs> I didn't even see you. Where can people find you? Okay, uh, you can find Dabali Express. Dabali Express is food express in the local language here in Abidjan. You can find us in Abidjan, in André, in Rivera 2, in Plateau, also in Zone 4. So for the moment, we have four restaurants. Soon, maybe in one month, maybe in two months, we have more restaurants open in Côte d'Ivoire. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me and I really appreciate your time. I really enjoyed this interview myself and uh, I will take this business to Ghana. I'm waiting for you. Wait for me. Give me, my, my give, me the, give me the proposal. <laughs> <laughs>